We do greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> Son of the Most High God. We thank God so much for now, for you that are tuned in around the world. <clears throat> we thank God for God giving us an opportunity to be with you here live this morning in the radio stations of AM 1360. That is WMOB. Uh, if you would, before we go any further, we're going to ask you if you would to bow with us in a word of prayer as we are led by our beloved brother, Elder Terrence James. Heavenly Father, we come this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father, we we honor you and we bless your holy name this day. Thank you, Lord. My Jesus. Lord and my God, we thank you for Jesus and the blood that he shed for us. Knowing, Lord, that without him we could not be saved. Amen. My Heavenly Father, we glorify you this morning. We honor your Son and we thank you for him. Thank for you, all Lord the great Jesus. things that he done. My Lord, he gave his life for us so that we might be saved. Thank you, Lord My Lord, Jesus. all the stripes that he took, all the things that happened to him, it was for our sakes. Yes, it was. Because Lord. we've sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, sir. Oh, but my Lord and my God, there's forgiveness today Amen. through faith, which is in Christ Jesus, Thank our you, Lord. Lord Jesus. May we all believe on him and look to him for our soul salvation. Thank you, Lord Because Jesus. my Lord, without him, we can do nothing. We thank you, Father, for all things you've done for us. And we ask your blessings upon your people this morning. My Lord, may they listen. And my Lord, may we all open our minds yes, and receive Lord your Jesus. word with fear. Thank you, Lord My Lord, Jesus. may we let go of the past and hold fast to what the word say Amen. that we might be saved. Help us, Lord we Jesus. just thank you and we bless you this morning for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We do greet you again in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the Most High God. We thank God for you now that are tuned in around the world. Uh, we thank God for having the opportunity to come to you again live here in the radio stations of AM 1360 WMOB. That's here in Mobile, Alabama. The call-in number is area code 251-432-1360. Again, that call-in number is area code 251-432-1360. But we're going to ask you, if you would, to hold your calls to about the last 20, 25 minutes of the program. And give us an opportunity to be able to teach going to the Scriptures. All right, so we ask you, if you would, to uh, please honor that, please. Also, let me make mention to the saints up north, Lord willing, <clears throat> we're looking, Lord willing, to arrive in your area this upcoming weekend. We'll be there in Seaford, Delaware, at the Community Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Elder Thorn Pitts is the pastor there. We will be there this upcoming weekend. I will be ministering on Saturday night. Uh, Elder Pitts will be ministering on Sunday. Uh, we certainly thank God uh, for the opportunity to be there uh, with the saints up north. That address is 26856 uh, Lonesome Road, and that is Seaford, Delaware. Again, I believe that's 26856 Lonesome Road, Seaford, Delaware. We'll be there that Saturday. Saturday night service will begin at uh, 7 o'clock, and I believe Sunday morning service will begin at 11 a.m. That is uh, Saturday, April 29th. And Sunday, April 30th, I do believe they will be having a Friday night service as well for those that can attend. Uh, so please feel free to drop in on Friday night uh, as well. All right. We thank God for all things. And again, brethren, we look forward to seeing you all up there uh, this upcoming weekend. Uh, I pray that God bless you all from the different locations with a safe trip to be able to meet us there. We will, Lord willing. At some point, be able to sit down, hopefully, maybe late Saturday, well, Saturday night after service and uh, deal with the brothers, talk with the brothers on any subject that they wish to discuss. Uh, however, as we often say, we ask you to come with the right spirit. Uh, we will not allow or tolerate the interruption of the service. Uh, but after service is over, we'll open the floor or feel free, you know, we'll pull up a chair and, and spend the night with you if need be going into the scripture. All right. Today I want to deal with <clears throat> the apostles doctrine. I want to deal with the apostles doctrine. You've got many out there, many uh, that are listening, many preachers around the country, many churches around the country that wear the title apostolic faith or apostolic doctrine, or apostles' faith. However they pronounce it, they say that they believe, preach, and practice what the apostles believed, what they preached, and what they practiced. Give me Acts, brother, 242. 
Give me Acts 2.42. I want y'all to pay close attention because I want to deal with the doctrine of the apostles. Acts 2.42, brother, what did it say? And they continued steadfastly. They continued steadfastly. In the apostles' doctrine. In what doctrine? The apostles' doctrine. Well, the people, my God, they continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles. Now, <clears throat> When I hear and see churches, brothers, religion, saying that they of the apostles' faith, apostles' doctrine, and when I go and look in the scripture and see indeed what the apostles' doctrine is, I see a conflict. Amen. I see a contradiction. Because if you're following the doctrine of the apostles, then that means you believe and you preach and you practice what they believe what they preach and what they practice. Amen. So now, how do I know, or how do you know you following the doctrine of the apostles by going to the scripture and seeing what did they preach? Amen. Amen. What did they practice? What did they believe? That will let you know whether or not you're truly following the doctrine of the apostles. It's more than just a label on your building. It's more than that. You've got to truly believe, preach, and practice what they believe, Amen. what they preached, and what they practiced. Now, today, I want to deal with the apostles' doctrine. I want to take one apostle at a time. We're going to start with the apostle Peter. We're going to leave Peter. We're going to go to Paul. We're going to leave Paul. We're going to go to John. I just want to see what did they preach. Amen. And I want all you apostolic faith churches out there to examine your church, examine your organization, examine what you believe and what your preacher preach, and see is it in line with what these apostles are about to preach. That will determine whether or not you are following the apostles' doctrine. Do you get me? Now stay with me. Acts 3, brother. Let's get Peter first. Acts 3, and we're going to start at verse 13. Let's see how did the apostle Peter talk. What did he say, brother? The God of Abraham. And the God of Abraham. And of Isaac. And of Isaac. And of Jacob. And of Jacob. The God of our father. The God of, now look, he's talking about God the father here. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, what did he do? Hath glorified his son, Jesus. Now, now, now this is Peter talking like this now, right? Amen. Now, 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 now look, we, we're starting to define what they believe. What they preach and what they practice. He have glorified who? His son, Jesus. He's glorified his son, Jesus. Read it, brother. Whom ye delivered up. You know the one that you delivered up. And denied him in the presence of Pilate. You denied him. Peter is breaking it down so there's no controversy on what he's talking about. You denied him in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go. Pilate wanted to let Jesus go. What did he say, brother? But you denied the Holy One. You denied the Holy One. And the just. And the just. And desired a murderer to be granted unto you. You desired a murderer. What did he say? And killed the Prince of Life. You killed, Peter said, the Prince of Life. Whom God hath raised from the dead. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What did Peter say? Whom God hath raised from the dead. No, God raised himself from the dead. Whom God hath raised from the dead. So the apostle Peter is saying God raised his son from the dead. Amen. Now this is, the, this is their doctrine here now. This is the doctrine of the apostles because this is what they're preaching here. What did he say, brother? Whereof we are witnesses. Peter said God raised him from the dead and we witnessed it. Amen. We, 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 look here. We, we saw it. My God, we was there. We was eyewitnesses. Give me Acts, brother, 4 and that verse 8. Now, I just want to hang with Peter for a while, and then we're going to leave Peter and go to another apostle. Acts 4 and 8. What did Peter say? Then Peter. Then Peter. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Said unto them. What did Peter say? Ye rulers of the people. What did he say, son? And elders of Israel. What did he say, brother? If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man. What did he say, brother? By what means he is made whole. What did he say? Be it known unto you all. Now listen to Peter. Peter said, be it known unto you all. And to all the people of Israel. And to all the people of Israel. That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ of who? Of Nazareth. So, look, he's not leaving a stone unturned. He's letting you know specifically he's talking about the one that came from Nazareth. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. What did he say, brother? Whom ye crucified. You know the one you crucified. Whom God raised from the dead. 
That's that, that Peter said that again? A amen. The apostle Peter done said again, God raised him from the dead. Amen. Now, this is the apostle's doctrine now. Amen. This is what the apostles are preaching, and you folks are reading it, and you're hearing it. Hear me talking now. What did he say, brother? Even by him. Even by him? Do it this man stand here before you hold. Give me Acts, brother, five. My God, I want to stay with Peter for a while. My God, verse 29, Acts 5, 29. Let's just ride with Peter. What did he say, brother? Then Peter. Then Peter. And the other apostles answered. What did he say? And said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Peter said we ought to obey God rather than man. The God of our fathers. The God of our father. Raised up Jesus. Is that what he said? Amen. That Peter talking, ain't he? Amen. The God of our fathers raised up himself. Raised up Jesus. He raised up himself. Raised up Jesus. He raised up Jesus. Whom ye slew. Whom you slew. And hanged on a tree. And you hung him on a tree. Him hath God exalted. Wait a minute. Amen. Wait a minute, Peter. Amen. Him have God. Wait a minute. Him have who exalted? Him hath God exalted. Him have God exalted. With his right hand. With his right hand. To be a prince. To be a prince. And a savior. And a savior. Or to give repentance to Israel. To give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of sins. This is the doctrine of the apostles Amen. now. Do you understand? Because look, this is what the apostle Peter is preaching, y'all. This is the doctrine of the apostles. If you don't believe, preach, or practice this, don't say you follow the doctrine of the apostles. Amen. Don't say that. Give me Acts 10, brother. Let's lay with Peter for a while, brother. Give me Acts 10, round about verse 37. My God, man, let Peter talk to you. What did he say, brother? That word I say ye know. What did he say, brother? Which was published throughout all Judea. Read it, brother. And began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. What did he say? How God anointed Jesus of wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Talk, Peter. Amen. Peter said how God anointed who? Jesus of Nazareth. God anointed who? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, the one that came from Nazareth. Amen. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. What did he say, brother? With the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. And with power. And with power. Who went about doing good. And Jesus all, went about doing good and doing what? And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What did he say, brother? For God was with God him. was with Jesus. Talk, Peter. And we are witnesses. And we are witnesses. Of all things which he did. Peter said we witness all that he did. What did he say? Both in the land of the Jews. What? And in Jerusalem. What did he say? Whom they slew. Whom they slew. And hanged on a tree. Wait a minute, Peter. Talk, Peter. They slew him and they hung him on a tree. Him God raised up the third day. It, it, Peter talking like that, brother. Amen. That's Peter. I get in trouble for talking like that, brother. They call me a false prophet for talking just like Peter talked. Amen. What did Peter say? Him God raised up the third day. Peter said, him, the one they slew and hung on a tree, him God raised up the third day. What did he say, brother? And showed him openly. And showed him openly. Not to all the people. Didn't show him to everybody. But unto witnesses. What? Chosen before of God. Read it. Even to us. Peter said even to us. Who did eat and drink with him. When? After he rose from the dead. This is the doctrine of the apostles, folk. Amen. This is the apostles' doctrine. What did he say, brother? And he commanded us. Peter said and he commanded us. To preach unto the people. To preach unto the people. And to testify. What? That it is he. That it is he. Which was ordained of God. Oh, hold on a minute, Peter. Amen. Peter said he gave us a commandment. My God, to preach and testify that it is he which is ordained of God. To be the judge of quick and dead. Peter said we had a commandment to preach this and testify about it. Amen. That it is he that God ordained to be the my God, the judge of the living and of the dead. Amen. What did he say, brother? To him give all the prophets witness. That what? That through his name. Through this man's name. Whosoever believeth in him. What you say? Shall receive remission of sins. This is the doctrine of the apostles. Amen. Whoever believe in him can Amen. receive remission of sins. That's right. My God, this is the apostles' doctrine. Give me Matthew 17, brother. My God, let's get the transfiguration. My God, and the apostle Peter, my God, man, is one of the apostles that was standing right there. My God, man, Acts 7, Max, Matthew, rather, 17. My God, drop down to verse 5 for the sake of, start at verse 1, brother. What did it say? And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother. Read it. And bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. What did it say? And was transfigured before them. 
He, Jesus was transfigured before these apostles. What he said? And his face did shine as the sun. What he say, brother? And his raiment was white as the light. What he say? And behold, there appeared unto the, unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Look, there appeared unto these apostles Moses and Elias talking with Jesus. What did he say, brother? Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus. What 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 did Peter say to Jesus? Lord, it is good for us to be here. Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt. If thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles. What did he say, brother? One for thee. One for thee. One for Moses. What did he say? And one for Elias. What did he say? While he yet spake. While Peter yet talked. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And what happened? And behold, a voice out of the cloud. A voice came out the cloud? Which said, this is my beloved son. Is, is that what he said? Amen. That voice, my God, came out of the cloud. Now, now, now wait a minute, y'all. Wait a minute now. If Jesus, the, if the Son of God is the Father, who is that speaking out the clouds? Amen. If the Son is the Father, then who is this speaking from the clouds? And let me tell you, this one that spake from the clouds, he did it down through the scripture. Amen. The Father spake from heaven down through the scripture. And on one occasion, my God, he spake from heaven, talking back to his Son. That's right. Do you understand? Look, give me, give me Matthew, brother. Hold that. I, I'm still, I, I want to come back, my God, and deal with Peter some more. But give me Matthew 3 and that verse 13. I want to get this voice coming from heaven on multiple occasions, my God, speaking concerning his son. Now, if the son is the father, who is this speaking from heaven? Your doctrine makes no sense. Matthew 3.13, what did it say, brother? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to join unto John to be baptized of him. And what did he say, brother? But John forbade him. John saying, forbade Jesus. For I saying, have need to be baptized of thee. John told Jesus, you need to be baptized of me. I don't need to be baptized of you. What did he say? And cometh thou to me. And you coming to me, John said? And Jesus answered and said unto him. What did he say? Suffer it to be so What did he say, brother? For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. What did he say? Then he suffered it. Then he suffered it. And Jesus. And Jesus. When he was baptized. When he was baptized. Went up straightway out of the water. Jesus came up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. The heavens were opened to Jesus. And he saw the Spirit of God. What is that? Descending like a dove and lighting upon and him. And lighting upon Jesus. What and lo, a voice from heaven saying. Hear that voice again. Amen. A voice from where? From heaven. And what did the voice say? This is my beloved son. The voice said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. If the son is the father, who is that speaking from heaven? If the Son is the Father, who is this speaking from heaven? Amen. That doctrine makes no sense. The Father spake from heaven on multiple occasions concerning his Son. Brother, give me St. John 12 and give me verse 27. My God, man, the Father spake from heaven on numerous occasions concerning his Son. My God, St. John chapter 12 and start at verse 27. What did he say, brother? Now is my soul troubled. Jesus said, now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? What did he say? Father, save me from this hour. What did he say, brother? But for this cause came I unto this, what, this hour. What did Jesus say? Father, glorify thy name. D Jesus said, Father, Jesus, the Son of God, talking with his Father, he said, Father, glorify thy name. What is that? Then came there a voice from heaven saying. Wait, wait a minute. Voice came from where? From heaven. Voice came from where? From heaven. What did he say? Saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So, after Jesus told the Father, glorify thy name, voice came from heaven and said, I done glorified it, but I'll do it again. Amen. Who, who is this speaking from heaven? Do you understand? Continue to read, brother. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said. What did, what did the people say? That it thundered. <laughs> <laughs> Authority spoke. Amen. They said it thundered. Amen. What did it say, brother? Others said. Others said. An angel spake to him. What did it say, brother? Jesus answered and said. What did Jesus say? This voice. This voice. Came not because of me. Jesus said it didn't come for me. But for your sake. Hallelujah to God. This voice came for your sake so that. What did he say, brother? Now is the judgment of this look, look, world. That voice came so that you can know that the father has sent his son Amen. and so that you can know that the son my god when he pray the father always hear him Amen. and that's what he give me john 11 40 brother my god he go look here he gonna let you know my god that the father always hear him saint john 11 in that verse 40 what did it say brother jesus says unto her what, look, look this is jesus my god when he raised, raised lazarus from the dead what did he say said i not unto thee what that if thou wouldest believe Thou shouldest see the glory of God. What did he say, brother? He getting ready to raise Lazarus. Then, listen now. Then they took away the stone. They took the stone away. From the place where the dead was laid. Where, where Lazarus was laid. What did he say? And Jesus. And Jesus. Lifted up his eyes. He, he lifted up what? He lifted up his eyes. And what did he say? And said, Father. And say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Say what? Said, Father. Said, Self. Father. Self. Father. Self. Father. Self. Father. Father. 
He lifted up his eyes and said, Self, Father. <laughs> My God, he lifted up his eyes and said, Self, Father. He said, Father, I thank thee. I thank thee that thou hast heard me. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. I thank thee that thou hast heard me. What he said. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Hallelujah to God. I thank you, Father, that you have heard me, and I know you hear me always. Amen. Do, you, do you hear Jesus talking to his Father? Amen. My, he did it down through the Scripture. My God, man, give me, give me John 17 and 1. Hallelujah to God. Give me St. John 17 and 1. My God, man, stay with me, brothers and sisters. St. John 17 and 1. What did he say, brother? These words spake Jesus. Oh, these words spake who? Spake Jesus. And what did he do? And lifted up his eyes to heaven and said. Wait, wait a minute. He lifted up his eyes to what? To heaven. No, he looked in the mirror. To heaven. No, he looked in the mirror. To heaven. He lifted up his eyes what? To heaven. To where? To heaven. And what did he say? And said, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah to <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> and said, self, father, self, father, self, father. <laughs> he said, father, the hour is come. The hour is come. Glorify thy son. Glorify thy son. That thy son also. That thy son also. May glorify thee. Hallelujah to God. Give me verse six, brother. What did he say? I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Yeah, dude, listen now, Jesus talking to his father. I have manifested thy name to the men that you gave me out of the world. Thine they were. Thine they were. And thou gavest them me. And thou gave them to me. And they have kept thy and word. And they kept thy word. What he said? Now they have known. That what? That all things. What? Whatsoever thou givest has given me. What? Are of thee. And? For I have given unto them. What? The words which thou gavest me. Give me verse 11, brother. My God, what did he say? And now I am no more in the world. Jesus said, now I'm no more in the world. But these are in the but world. But these are in the world. And I. And I. Come to thee. I do what? I come to thee. The son of God talking to his father said, what? I come to thee. And what? Holy father. Holy self, holy father. It makes no sense. Amen. That doctrine makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Do you understand? And all thy getting, get a good, clear understanding. Give me a second, Peter, brother, 116. My God, let's ride with Peter a little further here. My God, man, and then I want to go to Paul. Second Peter, chapter 1, and at verse 16. Now, that transfiguration, my God, man, we was reading in Matthew chapter, run to Matthew real fast, and let's wrap that up. My God, man, Matthew 17, round about verse uh, 5 or 6. Let's wrap that up real fast. What did he say? While he yet spake. While he yet spake. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And what did he say? And behold, a voice out of the cloud what, which said. What did he say? This is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. What? Hear ye him. Now, that was Peter is one of the apostles that was there. Now, give me Second Peter now, 1 verse 16. Let's get Peter when he's going to testify about that event. What did it say, brother? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We didn't follow cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say, brother? But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father. Wait a minute. He received from who? God the Father. This is Peter talking now said, Jesus, the Son of God, received from God the Father. What did he see, receive? Honor. He received honor. And glory. And glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. And what did the voice say? This is my beloved son. Peter said he received this honor and glory from God the Father when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory that said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. In whom I'm well pleased. What did he say? And this voice. This voice. Which came from heaven. Came from where? From heaven. What you say, Peter? We heard. Peter said we heard the voice. We was right there. Amen. What did he say, brother? When we were with him in the Holy Mount. This is the doctrine of the apostles, brothers and sisters. Amen, brother. you're, you're reading their doctrine. You're reading what they left on record. Give me uh, uh, Paul, brother. My God, man, for the sake of time, we can ride with Peter further, but give me Acts 13 and give me verse 29. Let's deal with a different apostle here and see how he's going to talk. You're listening to the doctrine of the apostles. Acts 13 and at verse 29, what did it say, brother? And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him. When they had fulfilled all that was written of Jesus. They took him down from the tree. They took Jesus down from the tree. And laid him in a sepulcher. Talk, Paul. They but, laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. So Paul talking just like Peter. Amen. They ain't fighting each other. They ain't contradicting each other. After they had all had been fulfilled of Jesus, they took him down from the tree. They laid him in the sepulcher. And what happened? But God raised him from the God dead. God raised him from the dead. 
And he was seen many days. He was seen many days. Of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. What did he say, brother? Who are his witnesses unto the people. What did he say? And we declare unto you glad tidings. Paul said, I I'm bringing you some glad tidings. What did he say? How that the promise. The promise. Which was made unto the father. What? God had fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again. What? Wait a minute. He raised up. Who again? Jesus again. He raised up who again? Up Jesus. Wait, he, and notice the Bible said raised him up again. again. Amen. Again. Do, saints, don't let that go over your head. He raised up Jesus again. A second time. When was the first time when he raised him up through Mary? My God, man, because remember, no man had nothing to do with him coming here. He was brought here through and by the power of God. Do you understand? Remember the angel Gabriel came to Mary, told her she was going to birth a child. She said, how can it be? I don't know a man. I'm a virgin. My God, the angel told her the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That's the first time God raised him up. They came along and put him to death. My God, the scripture saying here, God raised him again. God have brought him back again. What, what did the book say, brother? As it is also written in the second psalm. As it is also written, written in the second psalm. Thou art my son. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten this thee. This day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead. As concerning that he raised him up from the dead. Now no more to return to corruption. What did he say? He said on this wise. What did he say, brother? I will give you the sure mercies of David. I will give you the sure mercies of David. Now listen, now, 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 now here, here. We're just showing you the doctrine of the apostles. I just want you to see and understand, my God, man, what they preached. Do you understand, my God? Now, 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 look, look now, 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 now. That was Paul. Let's 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 go on to John. We could deal with Paul some more. Paul did a whole lot of writings about this, but let's go to a third apostle. Give me First John chapter one and start at verse one, my God. First John chapter one and at verse one. Let's see is John gonna contradict Peter or Paul? First John one and one said what? That which was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning. Which we have heard. Which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. We heard it, then we was able to see it with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. He said we looked upon it. What did he say, brother? And our hands have handled. And our hands was able to handle? Of the word of life. What did he call it? The word of life. What did he call it? The word of life. What did he say, brother? For the life was manifested. Look, look, the word of life. That life was manifested? And we have seen it. John said, and we saw it. Amen. What did he say, brother? And bear witness. And bear witness. And show unto you. And show unto you. That eternal life. That what? Eternal life. That what? Eternal life. What? Listen, brother, what did he say? Which was with the Father. So the eternal life was with the Father. Amen. So eternal life was with the Father. Listen, y'all. Y'all listen, Ella Murray. John said eternal life was with the Father. The Father gave us a gift. Amen. The gift that he gave us is eternal life. But he put that eternal life in his son. Amen. The only way you can get what's in the son, you got to receive the son. Amen. You can't get what's in him without receiving him. Now look, God gave us a gift. John said here that eternal life was with the father. The eternal life was with the father. Hold that, brother, and give me Romans 6, 23. I want to come right back to that eternal life that was with the father. But give me Romans chapter 6 and at verse 23. What did the Bible say? For the wages of sin. The wages of sin. Is death. Is death. Listen. But the gift of God. The gift of God. Is eternal life. Wait a minute. The gift of God is what? Eternal life. Where is it at? Through. Through. Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the gift of God is eternal life, but that's only through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So God gave us a gift, and that gift is eternal life, but he put it in his son, Jesus Christ. And the only way you can get the gift, you got to get the one that's holding the gift. And that's Jesus, Amen. the son of God. Amen. Do you get it? My God, you, you can't receive what's in him without receiving him. Amen. Amen. Stay with me, saints. I just want to help you. I want to see you have eternal life. Amen. That's why I keep presenting Jesus to you because he's the key to eternal life. Amen. And you can't have it without receiving him. That's right.
Get me, saints. Get me now. I'm trying to help you. God knows. What did he say? Romans 6.23? For the wages of sin. The wages of sin. Is death. Is death. But the gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life. Is eternal life? Through Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Give me St. John 6, brother. Start at verse 37. St. John 6 and at verse 37. My God, in all thy getting, get a good, clear understanding. Elder Murray just want to help you with the Bible. St. John 6, 37, what did it say? All that the Father giveth me. Listen to the Son of God. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Jesus said he's going to come to me. And him that cometh to me. What? I will in no wise cast out. What you say, Jesus? For I came down from heaven. Where you come from, Jesus? Down from heaven. Jesus said, I came down from heaven. Not to do mine own will. I didn't come to do my own will. But the will of him that sent me. What did he say, brother? And this is the Father's will which hath sent me. This is the Father's will, Jesus said, that hath sent me. That of all which he hath given me. All that he'd given me? I should lose nothing. What did he say? But should raise it up again at the last day. Wait, wait a minute. You're going to do what, Jesus? Raise it up again at the last day. What did he say? And this is the will of him that sent me. This is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which seeth the Son. Everyone that seeth the Son. And believeth on him. And believeth on the Son. May have. May have. Everlasting life. Because it's in the Son. Amen. It's in the Son, but you got to believe on him to receive what's in him. Amen. And that's eternal life or everlasting life. Read that again. What did he say? And this is the will of him that sent me. That what? That everyone. That everyone. Which seeth the Son. Which seeth the Son. But you got to be able to see the Son. The Lord got to remove the veil where you can see the Son. Amen. If the veil is not removed, you can't see the Son you don't have eternal life. That's right. It's no way you can have it because the Father put it in his Son. And in order for you to get it, you got to be able to see the Son. What did it say, brother? That everyone, everyone, which seeth the Son, which seeth the Son, and believeth on and him. And belie believeth. Believe it. Is that believeth? Believe it. Believe it. Hey, believe Continue it. to believe on the Son. What's the condition? May have everlasting life. May have everlasting life. And I will raise him up. And I, it, did it say I? I. 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 Will do what? Will raise him up. When? At the last day. It's in the Son of God, brothers and sisters. That's plain scripture. Amen. It's net, look here. You don't need to fast and pray to understand that. That's plain book right there. Do you understand? Go back, brother. 1 John chapter 1. Let's get some more of that. My God, pick up where you left off. 1 John chapter 1. What did he say? For the life was manifested. The life was manifested. And we have seen it. We've seen it. And bear witness. And bear witness. And show unto and you. And show unto you. That eternal life. That eternal life. Which was with the Father. Which was, which was with the Father. And was manifested unto and us. And was made known unto us. What is that? That which we have seen and heard. That which we have seen and heard. Declare we unto we you. We are declaring it unto you. That ye also may have fellowship with us. John said we want you to have fellowship fellowship with who? With us. With who? With us. With who? With us. What you say? And truly. And truly. Our fellowship is with the Father. Our fellowship is with the Father? And with his Son. And with who? He, and with his Son. And with who? And with his Son. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. My God, man, your fellowship better be with us. Amen. Do you understand? And our fellowship is with the Father and amen. with his Son, Jesus Christ. That's right. Now, this is what I can read. Amen. This is the doctrine of the apostles. What I'm reading to you all is the teachings of the apostles. If you do not believe this, if you do not agree with this, if you do not preach this, stop saying you're following the apostles' doctrine. Stop saying you of the apostles' faith because you're not. Amen. Do you understand? We're reading to you line upon line, precept upon precept, what the apostles preached, what they believe, and what they taught. First John, brother, now, chapter 2, give me verse 23. First John, chapter 2, start at verse 22. What did it say? Who is a liar? Who is a liar? But who is a liar but he that denieth? That Jesus is the Christ. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist. What is he? Antichrist. What is he? Antichrist. Brothers, 
these brothers, many of these brothers have taken on the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Antichrist simply means against Christ. Amen. And you can hear by their preaching, by their teaching, and even by their calls, they are against Christ. Amen. What did it say, brother? He is Antichrist. He's Antichrist. That denied the Father. That denied the Father. And the Son. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Some said, no, they acknowledge the Father, so they're not Antichrist. No, if you deny the Father and the Son, Amen. if you deny the Father and the Son, you're Antichrist. Amen. You can't come along and receive the Father and deny the Son. Because the, you fall under the category of Antichrist. Amen. What did he say, brother? Whosoever denieth the Son. Whoever denieth the Son. The same. The same. Hath not the Father. Is that plain? Amen. Don't tell me you know God. Amen. Don't tell me you got the Father. The Bible said, read that again. Whosoever. It said whosoever. So that don't mean, it, it, that covers every state. Everyone. It doesn't matter where you're from. Amen. The Bible said whosoever. Amen. What did it say, brother? Denieth the Son. Denieth the Son. The same. The same. Hath not the Father. Don't have the Father. Amen. What did it say? But he that acknowledgeth the Son. But he that acknowledgeth the Son. Hath the Father also. Thank God. Amen. I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I got the Father because I'm acknowledging his son like he told me to. Amen. Do you understand? My God, what did he say, brother? Let that therefore abide in you. Let that therefore abide in you. Which ye have heard from the beginning. Which you've heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. What's the condition? Ye also shall continue in the son. Continue in who? In the son. And? And in the father. No, the son don't exist. <laughs> Continue in who? Continue in the son. And? And in the father. My Thank God is God. everywhere, saints of God. This is the apostles' doctrine. Without controversy, you're reading the writings, the teachings, the sayings of the apostles. If you don't believe this, don't, stop saying you're the apostles' faith. Don't, don't say that no more. Amen. My God, man, because you do not agree with the apostles in this Bible. Do you understand? 1 John chapter 5, brother. My God, man, drop down to verse 10. 1 John chapter 5 and at verse 10. What did it say, brother? He that believeth on the Son of God. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He hath the witness where? In himself. What did it say, brother? He that believeth not God. Have done what? Hath made him a liar. God hath made him a what? A liar. What did he say, brother? Because he believeth not the record. He believed not the what? The record. That what? That God gave of his son. So God gave a record of his son, and they don't want to believe the record that God gave. What did it say, brother? And this is the record. What's the record? That God hath given to us eternal life. He gave us what? Eternal life. Remember that gift Amen. of God? Is eternal life, but it's through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, now John is talking about it again. This is the record that God has given us eternal life. What did it say? And this life. And this life is in. Is in. His son. Is that plain, brothers? Amen. This life is in his son. Amen. This life, this eternal life is in his son. Son. Amen. What did it say, brother? He that hath the son. He that hath the son has life. He got life. He that hath the son, he got life. Amen. What did he say? And he that hath not the son of God. He that hath not the son of God hath not life. Is that plain? You that do not believe, you that do not teach you don't practice my god the teachings of the apostles pertaining to the son of god you're not of the apostles faith amen you're not of the apostles faith amen. what did he say brother he have not what he that hath the son hath life he got life and he that has not the son of god what has not life he don't have life what did he say these things have i written unto you that what that believe on the name of the son of god the name of who? The Son of God. What did he say? That ye may know. That you may know. That ye have eternal life. That you have eternal life. Amen. What did he say? And that ye may believe. And that you may believe. On the name. On the name. Of the Son of God. It's everywhere, brothers and sisters. Amen. This is not just, this ain't, this ain't some Murray rolled out the bed and came up with. This is in your Bible. 
Do you understand? This is the stone yes, which was set at naught of you builders, Amen. which have become the head of the corner. Yes. Brethren, please accept what's written in the Bible. Get Elder Murray out of it. Amen. Stop looking. Never mind who's teaching it. By God, follow along in the scripture and acknowledge what the Bible said. Do that. Do you understand? Now, the phone line is open. For those who wish to call in, please feel free to do so. The phone number is area code 251-432-1360. Again, 251-432-1360. Feel free to give us a call. Brother, continue to read. What did he say? And this is the confidence. And this is the confidence. That we have in him. Now, 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 now listen to John. John's still talking, saying this is the confidence that we have in in him. Now look, if, if there's any apostolics out there who believe this teaching, the apostolic faiths out there who believe this teaching, let us know you believe it. Let us know you believe what's written in the Bible. Do you understand? Because the most of the ones that we hear from, they are opposing and fighting what's written in this Bible concerning my God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But yet they say that they're, they're of the apostles' faith. There's no way you are of the apostles' faith if you don't believe what the apostles preached. Continue to read, brother. What did he say? And this is the confidence. And this is the confidence. That we have in him. That we have in him. That if we ask anything. That we, it, look, look now. If we ask anything. According to his will. According to his will. He heareth us. He, wait a minute. He heareth us. He heareth us. He heareth us. He heareth us. A dead man can't hear. Amen. A dead man cannot hear. The Bible said if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Amen. He heareth us. What did he say, brother? And if we know that he hear us. And if we know that he hear us. Whatsoever we ask. What you say, brother? We know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. My God, man. Second John, brother. Second epistle of John. Start at verse 3. I still just, I'm dealing with the apostle doctrine and what they preached. My God, man, that's the message today, the apostle's doctrine. Second epistle of John, start at verse 3, brother. What did it say? Grace be with you. Grace be with you. Mercy. Mercy. And peace. And peace. From God the Father. From God who? From God the Father. From God who? God the Father. What did it say, brother? And from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. <laughs> <laughs> Is that cut and dry, brothers? Amen. Amen. Read that again, brother. Grace be with you. Now, 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 now listen now. This is the apostle's doctrine. This is, the, this is John here talking. He said what, brother? Grace be with you. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace. Mercy and peace. From God the Father. From God the Father. And. And. From the Lord Jesus Christ. And. Amen. And. And, did it say and? And. And. From who? From the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he? The Son of the Father. <laughs> It's without controversy. Amen. My God, man, this, look here. This is the apostles' doctrine. This is what they preached right here. My God, drop down to verse 8, brother, for them that's got another doctrine. What did he say? Look to yourselves. Look to yourselves. That we lose not those things which we have wrought. Bible said that we lose not those things which we have wrought. But that we receive a full reward. That we receive a full reward. What did he say? Whosoever transgresseth. Whosoever Bible said whosoever, it got everybody. Amen. Transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. And don't remain in the doctrine of Christ. Hath not God. Now, now, now listen to this now. They have not God if they do not abide in the doctrine of Christ. Amen. If they do not stay in the doctrine of Christ, they don't have God. What did it say, brother? He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He hath both. He have what? Both. He have what? Both. He have who? Both. He have who? Both. He have who? Both. What did it say? The Father and the Son. Yes, thank God for both. Amen. I said thank God for both. Amen. Thank God I'm abiding in the doctrine of Christ. I got both the Father and the Son. Amen. I got enough knowledge to know that the Father sent the Son Amen. and that the Father put salvation in his Son. Eternal life is wrapped up in the Son of God. And in order for me to get eternal life, I got to receive the Son of God Amen. because it's all in him. Amen. It's all in him. My God, what did he say, brother? If there come any unto you. If there come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine. I, I, I want y'all to get this. I, I want you to get this now because I know many of the elders, many of the bishops, many of the ministers out there, 
You know, they're going overboard to fellowship with these brothers who don't believe the gospel, don't believe the doctrine of Christ, don't believe the Son of God is alive, and they just try to evade the subject, say, well, we ain't going to deal with it because it's so controversial. We're just going to come together, we're going to fellowship, and we just ain't going to talk about it. Let me tell you something. When you refuse to talk about it, you are denying Christ. Amen. When you refuse to preach it, you're denying the Son of God. Do you understand? Let me tell you something. You just like them folks in the Bible who was because of fear of the Jews, they did want to express how they felt. Amen. You just like them. If this thing is in your heart, you're going to open your mouth and it's going to come out of your mouth. Amen. The only reason it don't come out your mouth because it's not in you. Amen. It's not in your heart. We're not going against God's word to try to rub shoulders and get along with no man. If they don't want the gospel of Jesus Christ, I am the wrong brother for you to fellowship <laughs> with. Do you understand? Amen. My God, because I'm going to preach what's written in this Bible. And when I search the scripture from Genesis to Revelation, all of it is pointing to Jesus Christ, the son of the most high God. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. He said, it's written of me to do thy will, O God. So all of it, my God, is pointing right to Jesus. Amen. What did he say, brother? If there come any unto you. If there come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine. The Bible said, and don't bring this doctrine. Receive him not into your house. No, let him preach. Receive him not into your house. Just don't talk about it because it's so controversial. Receive him not into your house. If a man come and don't bring this doctrine. If that man don't believe this doctrine, let me tell you something. I'm going to show him love. I'm going to show him respect. I'm going to show him hospitality. But he will never get up in the pulpit talking about preaching to the people. Do you understand? Because if we're going to continue to read, and I'm going to show you God going to hold me accountable for that. Amen. My God, man, I will become partaker of his false doctrine. Amen. Do you understand? This is not a game. This is not a joke. My God, man, we got to stand on what they left on record. Amen. We still dealing with the apostles doctrine. Listen to what the apostle is saying concerning them that don't believe this doctrine. What did he say, brother? If there come any unto you. If there come any unto you. And bring not this doctrine. The Bible said and Bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your house. Don't receive him into your house. Neither bid him God speed. Don't bid him God speed. Read it. For he that biddeth him God speed. He that biddeth him God speed. Is partaker of his evil deeds. That's what the scripture said. Amen. You become partaker of his evil deeds. Do you understand? Elder Murray is not looking to be partaker of no man evil deeds. I have love and respect for every man. But when it comes to the gospel, we're not playing games with this. Do you understand? You're dealing with the soul. You're dealing with the salvation of people. And this is not a game. It is not a joke. Do you understand? Saints of God, all thy getting, get a good, clear understanding. You know, I thank God for how God have made provisions for this gospel to go out. And indeed, it's reaching the world now. And I thank God for so many understanding has come open. You know, I I'm so grateful to just to see this thing unravel, how God is shining light, shining more light and more light. The Bible said a path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Saints of God, just continue to listen. Stay tuned to this program. You know, God has done this. Just stay tuned to this program. More and more is going to be coming. Because I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, God is shining this thing even unto Elder Murray brighter and brighter as the days go by. And that doctrine of no son of God, let me tell you something, it's on its deathbed. It's, now, there's many brothers around the bed trying to revive it. By God, they're trying to resuscitate it. But let me tell you something, you might as well pull the plug. Amen. Pull the plug, my God, and walk out the, out the room, close the door, and just let all the family know there's nothing we could do. Amen. Do you understand? Just let all the other preachers know there was nothing we could do. It done passed. My God, take it on out and bury it. Do you understand? Amen. My God, you might as well get ready to bury it because what's taking place right now is not of Elder Murray. This is not Elder Murray's doing. This is the work of God, and there's nothing y'all can do about it. God is shining this light. He's killing that doctrine. Amen. It's being killed. Do you understand? The Father's Son is alive. Amen. Do you understand? And the Father to put salvation in his Son. Amen. And if you don't believe in the Son, you cannot be saved. Amen. That is the only way you can overcome is by your belief in the Son of God. First John, brother, five and five. 
My God, man, y'all get me now. And all thy getting, get a good, clear understanding. Amen. My God, man, First John 5, start at verse 3 if I'm not mistaken. What did he say? For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God. What did he say? Overcometh the world. He do what? Overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God do what? Overcometh the world. What did he say, brother? And this is the victory. And this is the victory. That overcometh the world. That what? E that overcometh the world. Read it. Even our faith. What did he say, brother? Who is he? Who is he that overcometh the world? That overcometh the world. But he that believeth. But he that believeth. That Jesus is the Son of God. That is the one that's going to overcome the world. Amen. Them that believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Brothers, y'all, please, please go back and search the scripture. Phone lines are open now. My God, man, 251-432-1360. That's 251-432-1360. Feel free to give us a call. My God, but now listen to me. Listen to me. Honesty is this. I got a call the other day. I got a call the other day from a brother. And this brother, in a matter of weeks or months, whenever he can get to Alabama, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feature this brother on television. I'm going to introduce the world to this brother just whenever he can get here. If he's, uh, he come on a second, uh, or better yet, second or fourth Sunday, I'm going to bring him to the radio station. And I'm going to let him get on the air, and I want him to give his own testimony of how God opened his understanding of true salvation of Jesus being the Son of God. Now, let me tell y'all something about this brother. This brother grew up under the teachings of Bishop S.C. Johnson, no son of God. This brother was starch. He was hardcore, no son of God. This brother, he's, he's a minister. And in our ministers' meetings in the past, some of these meetings lasted 8, 10 or more hours at a time dealing with this subject. He was present. This was back when we would have, by God, a packed room, by God, 20, 30, 40 ministers dealing with this subject. He was one of the ones that opposed what we was teaching so bitterly. He was so, he was, he was so bitter against the teaching of Jesus being the Son of God. Many scripture I would present. I remember this brother vividly. Everything just about I would try to show him. My God, he, well, he calling those things which be not as though they are. As though they are. He don't really mean that. He calling that, those things which be not as though they are. He would quote that because that was Bishop S.C. Johnson's favorite quote. My God, man, whenever he, they brought him to a scripture or he ran to a scripture that he knew contradicted his doctrine, he would just throw out Romans chapter 4 uh, where he calling those things which be not as though they are. So when the brother would do that, I knew where he got that from because that's what his former you know, uh, uh, pastor would do. Long story short, the Lord stopped this brother. The Lord quickened his mind. The Lord has opened his understanding. And now this brother is just as hardcore on teaching Jesus being the son of God as he was on teaching against Jesus being the son of God. And now Ella Murray loved talking to him now. I love talking, but I want him to give his own testimony. He called me last week again. Must have been Thursday or so. We talked. He told me, Elder Murray, he said it got to a point where I knew I could not defend what I was saying. He said, and when I would get in a jam, these are his words. He said, when I would get in a jam, Michael, when somebody would jam me with a scripture about Jesus being the son of God, he said, I would just start quoting what Johnson said, hoping that that would get them off my back. <laughs> now, this is what he testified to me last week. He said, I, I would just start quoting whatever John I remember Johnson had said, just to try to get them off my back. He said, I knew I couldn't defend my stance. And it got to a point he got tired of fighting. He just humbled himself, and now the Lord is dealing with that brother. The Lord is opening that brother's understanding more and more as the days go by. So now he have asked Elder Murray to come back with the brothers that we have broke off because of this teaching who broke off from us, and, and, and let's set 
and reason out of the scripture to see if we can help them brothers. I told them, no problem. This thing wasn't done in the corner. Elder Murray is not ducking and dodging with this. This thing is written. And, the, and this is what I told the brother. I said, don't, I don't want the brothers blindsided. I want them to know that Elder Murray is coming. And we will set if it takes all day and deal with the scripture. But as I said to him, I'm going to say over the air, I don't, I don't want no tapes of S.E. Johnson. I don't want no books that he wrote. I don't want no sayings from Johnson. All I want is what's written in that Bible. Do not bring me, I don't whether it's Johnson or any other fella in Philadelphia. Don't bring me no mystery of the Godhead foolishness. Don't bring me that junk. Bring me Bible. Bring Bible. And if you agree, if you believe the Bible, then this conversation, my God, man, is going to go very well. Do you understand? But if you oppose the scripture, then it's not going to go so well. Do you understand? Again, Elder Murray did not roll out of the bed and just come up with something. You folk are hearing this. And you people that are following this doctrine, you're so caught up in your pastors until deep down within, you know he's wrong. You, you know better. If you got any sincereness in you at all, you know that doctrine is not right. And you know salvation is in the Son of God. Amen. Now, if you don't believe the teachings of salvation being in the Son of God, you're going to take your pastor's word over what's written in that Bible, then I'm going to tell you right now, your pastor better be able to save you. Amen. He better be able to save you. Now, God put salvation in his Son, and if you believe in him, the Son of God can save you. Amen. He can save you. Do you understand? But your pastor can't save you. Let that doctrine die. Let it go. You got to turn from these men back to the word of God. Get these men out of your system. And let's go back to what's written in that Bible. These men can't save you. It doesn't matter how famous, how popular. My God, they have my God made themselves out to be. None of that matters. None of that matters. My God, only thing that matters is what's written in that Bible. And if they don't believe that, let them be a curse. Amen. That's what you got to do, saints of God. Let them be a curse. I have been where some of what many of you are caught up in men. I grew up under this stuff where you exalted men so high. You thought so much of these men. And you know what? The Lord in every case, every situation that I've seen, when you exalt men like that, something is going to happen. Amen. Amen. It's not a matter of if. The, the question is when. The Lord is going to allow something to happen whereby you can see that these men are not who they have professed themselves to be and they are not who you think they are. Amen. Let me tell you something. These men that y'all have exalted now, if you be honest, you're able to see that their doctrine is false. Their doctrine is wrong. And that's the reason why, no marvel, that's the reason why many of them that think they so big, they will never come and sit in front of this mic with us and discuss this stuff over the air. They won't do it because they're not a fool. They know better. Do you understand? And they're not going to jeopardize their livelihood. If they getting all these tithing, they getting all these offering, they're able to live in their fancy homes, drive their fleet of cars, all this stuff, wear they my God, tailor-made suits, they can do all that off your ignorance. Do you understand? So they're not going to take a chance. Do you understand? These folk ain't no fool. They ain't going to take a chance, by God, for their doctrine to be exposed, whereby they can't live that lavish lifestyle anymore because people's understanding come open and they start jumping ship. Amen. Do you understand? They start jumping ship. So that's why these fellas will never do it. Elder Murray is willing. To sit in front of this mic, I don't care how big, how famous they think they are. Come sit across from us in front of this mic, and let's have this discussion over the air where the world can hear it. Come do that. The scripture said, come let us reason together. I don't have to come in your church in front of a, a, a congregation of brainwashed people. What I'm coming there for? My God, if you belch, they'll start getting quicker. <laughs> if you belch, they'll start hallelujah. An environment such as that will be unprofitable. 
Do you understand? Come in an environment where we can sit in this studio and have this discussion over the air. Do you understand? If your objective is to help people, Elder Murray, I can testify, my objective is to help people. My God, if that's your objective, then you will have no problems with doing this. Do you understand? But if you've got another agenda, then you're not going to do it. Do you understand? So I plead with you. Do as the scripture say. Come now. Let us reason together. Do you understand? Let's reason out of the scripture. My time is about gone, but let me say this here to you. In the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul mannerism was, he would go right with them Jews where they was, my God, and have these discussions when they was opposing what he was teaching. Saints of God, Elder Murray is willing to sit and talk with any man concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ, long as it's something legit and not a bunch of foolishness. We thank God for you that are listening, you that are up north. Hope to see you this upcoming weekend. Until next time, may God bless you.